Hi everyone, Lou Maniac here, and today I will be showing you how to make the gorgeous new design, and it is called the cravat bracelet. Um, I think that's how it's pronounced, or I'm guessing. I really don't know. Um, so hopefully I didn't butcher that name completely, but... <laughs> Anyways, um, this is what it looks like, and it is one of the most unique bracelets I've ever seen with the uh, way you loop it and everything. However, it isn't reversible, but... I mean, it doesn't look bad on this side, it's just not completely symmetrical. So this is the way you wear it. And, um, it does require two looms. And you will have two pins set up aligned, one pin in front, and two pins aligned here. Um, so you can get your loom set up while I tell you about the designer. Um, it is designed by at pdx underscore rsw underscore fra on Instagram. And she posts a lot of really awesome looming pictures, so make sure to follow her. And if you make this bracelet, also be sure to tag both me and her on Instagram so we can see your renditions. And um, you can use as many colors for this bracelet as you want, but in this tutorial I will only be using three, just like I did on this one. So I will be using my um, Neon Pink Jelly, Turquoise Opaque, and Lime Green Opaque. And they're all from the Rainbow Loom Web Store, except for the jellies in there from Michaels. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first step is to start from this um, middle pin, and you're going to go out to the left and out to the right. And you do the same thing on the other side. And now you will simply go straight forward. And if you would like to do a full wrap, um, of course you will need two extra looms, but uh, I recommend doing about 20 gaps down for the perimeter on it. That's what I do for my wrist. So whenever you get to the second pin from the top, you'll turn into the center and angle up back to that center pin here. Now we'll finish off the right side. So go from here and just go straight forward. And you can kind of push these down as you go because, of course, we'll be placing quite a few more bands. And whenever you get to the second pin from the top, you will go into the left and up at an angle to meet up with that point. Just like so. And now we are ready to place um, horizontal bands, which is going to be the gold on the sides in this bracelet. And um, if you have limited edition bands or bands that break easier, you can use them for this part because there won't be hardly any tension on them. So, if you guys would like to do that, and you're just going to be placing them from um, this first row over to the second row, but you'll skip this one because you don't want to overlap the perimeter, and you'll just continue that all the way up, it's a super simple step. And then on the third pin down, that will be our last one we place. And now we'll do the same thing on the right side. And the band placement of this bracelet is pretty easy. It's the looping that gets a little bit tricky, as you will see. And once you have all of those placed, we are ready to place our, um, they're going to be kind of diagonal bands, and they are going to be the black that I used in this bracelet. But for this one, I will be using my lime green. And you're going to start from this corner down here on the left, and you're going to put a band from here across to meet up with this horizontal band. So you'll just stretch it across there. And now you'll go to the second pin on the left, 
and stretch it to meet up with the next horizontal band. And you'll just continue that step connecting from the perimeter out to the horizontal band above it. And these bands won't have too much tension on them either. That's kind of a weak band. A lot of them in my uh, lime green pack are really weak for some reason. If you can see how thin it is, it's like, I don't know, it just, that one's not too bad, but. Anyways, <laughs> and now you will do the same thing on the right side, but you will start from this bottom right corner and just go at that angle and they will all be parallel to that. Just continue placing them all the way up. And the last one connects back up here at the perimeter. So your loom should look like this, and now we're going to place X's in the middle. And um, on this bracelet I used the pink, silicone pink. So whichever one you want to be in the center there is what you'll use next. And we are going to be placing X's all the way up our loom. And so we will start down at the second pin here. And you'll place a band at an angle to go into the second pin in the middle. And you'll do the same thing on the right side. So it'll meet up now. And now from that center pin, you go out to the left and out to the right. So that's one X. And now we'll continue that all the way up our loom. So now you'll start here and go into the center and into the center, and then out from the center, and out from the center, And also, I forgot to mention, um, this is the designer's first ever original design. So I am incredibly impressed with how she applied these looping techniques, and it's very cool. And now we have one more X. Okay, and now our last step is going to be to place a um, single chain up the center, and we're actually going to be placing a single chain and then looping some and then placing another one. So um, the first single chain you place is going to be the one that you see on the front, and the second one is the one you see on the back, but since you're not going to be wearing it this way probably, um, you won't want to, you want to use your favorite color as the one that goes first. So. I'm going to be using blue, and again, that will represent the gold that's in this one. I forgot to say that. And we're just going to do a simple single chain up this middle part. And whenever we get to the top, we can add a cap band. So take your perimeter color, double it over, and stretch it over that last pin. So now you can spin your loom around, and we are ready to start looping. And so the first step is going to be to pull out all three bands from this pin. So we'll push back the cap band, pull the first band forward, Go back into the cap band, grab the next one on top, and pull it back towards itself. And pull the next one back towards itself. And now we are 
um, ready to start kind of looping these X's out. So we'll loop forward one more single chain and then go back into where you just looped that from. And you're just going to um, loop out your X's. So from top to bottom, pulling them back to themselves. Actually, sorry about that, guys. Put them back. Put those two that you looped back on there. I forgot. We actually do a special looping on this. Can't believe I almost forgot that. Okay. So from um, this spot here, we just looped where we just looped out our single chain. We're going to grab the top band, and it would be coming back to itself, but instead, we're going to pull it to where it's overlapping the band above it. Like this. And now grab the next one. It should be going to the right, but instead we're pulling it up. Just like so. And now the next one would be going back to itself here, but instead we're pulling it down. And this one pulls down instead. So the bands are being looped to the opposite spot pretty much, so if it was a band that would be pulled back to the bottom, it's now going to the top. So, And now um, we can't loop out our X's yet since we have a single chain in the way, so we pull that forward. And now we do the same thing in this one. Grab the band, pull it up, grab the next one on top, and pull it up. Now the next two go downward and downward. Loop that forward. Do the same thing on this one. And I'll show you once more and then I'll go off screen and finish it up. Sorry, my hand is in the way there. So you are now going to continue that step all the way up your loom. So you will just loop out all the bands from here, loop that one forward, and then I guess I'll show you another one. And you grab the top one and pull it up, and the next two you pull down. So you will now finish doing that up your loom. I'm going to go off screen and finish that up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I now have all of my X's looped, and now we're actually going to be placing a, another layer of single chains, which is um, the layer that I mentioned you won't be seeing because it'll be on the reverse side of your bracelet. So whichever one you want to be kind of the, the black that I used here, you will place that next. So you're going to flip your loom back around to place more bands. Grab your next color, and we're just placing them straight forward on our single row. Okay, and once we get to the top, we are ready to loop again, so we'll flip it back around. And the next step is pretty tricky, so pay very close attention. Um, we are actually going to be working from the side here. And let's see. Okay, so on this row here, we are going to be looping the bottom one into the middle. And so we will go, there should be three bands that are from your X's here and you're going to want to grab the bottom one. Ignore the other bands here, so don't grab the perimeter or this diagonal. Grab the very bottom one of your X's. From the outside, you're going to bring it over and place it on that middle pin. Just like so. And you're going to do that same thing on this one, so I'll try to get close to the camera here. And there'll be four bands on this one, but you're going to kind of ignore those other bands, grab the very bottom one, just like so bring it over, and place it on that single. And again, grab the bottom one, bring it up and over from the outside, and place it on the single, single chain. And we're just continuing that up our loom. So just make sure that you don't grab any other bands, you're always just grabbing that um, bottom one there.
and then this will be your last one. And now we are going to do the same thing on the right side. So on this one here, we are going to grab the bottom one. I know this is a weird angle, I'm just trying to make sure you guys can see the bands. So we grab the bottom one, and there will just be three on that one. And we grab it, and it's going to pull into the center there, and meet up with the other one that we pulled over. And we're just going to continue that, and once you get the hang of it, you can probably pull it from the um, front. And actually, if you just um, grab here, you can just kind of grab into there and get that bottom one. Because it's kind of loose, and it always goes over and into the center. So it's kind of easy to grab if you do it that way, but it's still kind of tricky sometimes. Make sure that it's always the bottom one that you're grabbing. And that will be our final one. And I actually missed looped one. I kind of, I didn't grab the bottom one, so I'm going to go off screen and fix that real quick. And I'll be right back. Okay, so it is fixed. That little mistake I made. <laughs> and so now we are ready to loop out these um, horizontal bands. Or not horizontal, um, diagonal bands. And so we're going to go into the second pin here, or second row, and second pin up, and you're just going to grab that band and pull it back to itself. Grab the next one, pull it back to itself. So all of these are just, you're pushing back the bands, grabbing that band only, and just bring it back to its home pin. And now we'll do the same thing on the right. Start here and just pull each one back to itself. Okay, and now we are going to loop over these horizontal bands, and so each place that there's a horizontal band, you just go into that kind of cat band that's created, and you're just going to pull it back to itself, just like so. So you'll be looping out of the second row each time. And the same thing on the right side. So as you can see, there isn't too much tension on these bands. Um, and that is why I recommended that you can use the limited edition bands if you have them. Okay, and now we are going to loop for the single that we um, placed very last. And this is a little bit different. You can kind of pull your cap band up over it there, but it still isn't going to loop from the cap band properly. But And now you will just loop it forward, but um, as you can see, it's still being looped. It's not going to fall off, even though you didn't go through a cap band, because it has these other bands supporting it. And now you will just simply... Um, Push back the bands and grab the one that goes forward and just pull it to its home pin.
And there aren't very many bands to push out, actually. It's pretty empty on those pins. And you pull it to the top. And now our last step is simply to loop out the perimeter. And we already, in the very beginning, we looped out the ones that went um, to the right and left, so now we can start our looping here. Grab that bottom band and pull it back to itself. And simply loop up the left side. Just make sure you push back all of the bands on top. Whenever you get to the top here, you'll grab that bottom one that goes in toward the right, and in toward the right again. And now we're just going to do the same thing on that right side. And then when we get to the top, you'll do the same thing. You'll just go into the center here. Just like so. And now we are ready to um, stick a band through. So you'll stick your hook entirely through all of these bands. And you will grab a perimeter color and pull it through. So if this is a full wrap bracelet, you can go ahead and attach your C-clip here. But if you would like to do an extension, um, you can go ahead and add a few links, however you like to do that. I don't usually show that much tutorials because everyone does it differently, so I personally do it on my hook, but I know a lot of people do it on their loom and on their fingers, so that is up to you. But now you will want to um, carefully remove these bands because this does have some um, tight looping in the center a little bit, so if you just rip it off you could have some band breakage, so remove those carefully and I will be right back with the finished product. And here's my finished product. And I am absolutely in love with this design. It comes off just perfectly. I mean, you don't even have to stretch it. It's immediately perfect. But, of course, this side, again, isn't symmetrical. You can wear it however you want. But um, this is meant to be the signature side. And I like how it's kind of like a single. It's kind of trapped behind bars there, sort of, is what it looks like. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. And please make sure to um, give credit to the designer and follow her on Instagram. Got some bands stuck there. <laughs> Anyways, her Instagram account is called at pdx underscore rsw underscore fra, and I will have that information in the description box below if you forget, so, um, yeah, please make sure to follow her, and also you can follow me on Instagram at lumaniac, and that is spelled just like in my channel name, l-o-o-m-a-n-i-a-c, and please subscribe to my YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!